Okay, well, let's just kind of look at it from a big map perspective. Woodland Park here, up here at, uh, not really A, but Woodland Park is the actual headwaters, and then you can see Fountain Creek following all the way down here, following I-24, or Highway 24, I should say. kind of crosses over to I-25, and then it just kind of flows down this direction. And you can kind of see how it goes through these mountains. And, of course, there's tributaries and brooks that will flow downhill into this. So there's lots of places that are flowing down into this creek. So if a drop of rain comes down here, in fact, there is, of course, more to this than I was saying, is that there's also even, you know, if water falls here, it's eventually going to reach, and then there's uh, the Fountain Creek also kind of goes up in this direction. It's going downhill this direction. I'm not exactly sure the, the f I think actually this is where it goes. And so all these things are going to flow into that. So this is all collecting water from this entire area. Okay, now let's go back to the concept of high gradient uh, streams. What are some characteristics? The first one is the slope of the land is usually steep. I've already talked about that, so very steep. They travel greater than 10 feet per second. Remember we talked about how fast they travel. This is considered fast, 10 feet per second. The way you'd measure that, by the way, is you would take like a cork or something like that, and you would, or something, a little piece of wood or something like that, and you would see how far it travels in every second. And so if it, you know, you'd, you'd have a river and maybe you'd have a guy, I mean, I'll draw a picture. You'd have a guy standing here by the river, boom, and maybe you've got down, you know, uh, 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 I don't know, half a mile down here. You'd have another guy. And you'd put, you know, something red in the water. Oh, I can make it red. Ooh, I can make it red. Ooh, let's make it red. All right, I got a red. Put the red uh, floaty thing in the water. And then you'd say, I, you know, if I have a walkie-talkie, by the time it gets to him a half a mile later, he can say, well, that took so many minutes or so many seconds. And then they can then figure out what the number of feet per second that that river travels. And that's what they call a high gradient stream. Um, also, um, in the high gradient streams, they tend to not have a whole lot of water in terms of the actual volume of water. So we would say that there's not a high volume of water, I should say, right here. They tend to be small and shallow. As you saw in the video clips, the, the streams were not very shallow. And they, they got, uh, or deep, pardon me, they got deeper and deeper as they go. But they truly are not, in Colorado here, there's not too many very deep rivers because um, we are pretty much the headwaters of most of these river systems because, of course, of our high elevation. If we were to move to Mississippi or places like that, or like the Mississippi River, of course, it gets very deep and wide because, of course, it is um, where all the water's headed. Um, they can move very large particles, rocks. Um, uh, are larger particles than low gradient streams because, of course, there's more energy because they're moving faster, that speed issue that we talked about just a minute ago. Okay, a couple other important words. Down cutting. Now, down cutting is the erosion of a valley by a stream. So as a, a river goes through a stream, so if you look at the picture here, there's a river, of course, traveling through here. This is um, the San Juan River in Utah, um, is that it's cut down. It used to be the river used to be up here. The land used to be up here, but the river has cut this valley. The valleys tend to be like a V-shape when they get cut. So uh, as you get a valley, they tend to be V-shaped. That's what we saw here with Fountain Creek. Um, sometimes they can be more cliff-shaped, you know, like the Grand Canyon, where the river flows down through the midst of that. But most of the times they're this V-shape. So this is a process that deepens the channel of a stream or valley by removing material. So it moves material, the silt and the sand and the rocks, and moves them down well, to the ocean, and we'll talk about the deltas and such in the next one. So these are several stages of downcutting of the San Juan River in Utah. This is the 20, 1927 photo. Remem remnants of former floodplains stand as terraces. So these used to be the floodplains, but now they're not. The floodplains are now through here and here, aren't they? So it kind of changes, doesn't it? Speaking of floodplains, what's a floodplain? Well, that's the part that when it overflows the banks, it creates, well, a flood, right? So it's a, the nearly flat land adjacent to the stream or river that experiences occasional or periodic flooding. So it can occasionally flood. You don't usually want to build your house in a floodplain because if you do, you might, um, well, get flooded. <laughs> Makes sense, yeah. All right, or here's a good sort of a schematic picture here. Um, is that here we have the floodplain. Here's where all the, the water comes down, and the floodplain is wherever this thing is. Usually the floodplain, if you've got a, a river like this, is now not a high-grade stream, but a low-gradient stream, is that it's pretty much this area right here. We have meandering things, and we'll talk about that in the next podcast. So, All right. Now let's kind of get mathematical here. There's something called stream discharge. This measures the volume, like the gallons of water kind of deal, passing at a point along a river in a unit of time. So we can figure out what that is. And there are people who study this and try to figure out how much water is traveling. And why would they care? Well, guess what? You, you need to drink water, right? Uh, you need to uh, water your crops. You need to know how much water is coming out of your stream system so that you know you have enough 
for all the uses for people uh, to drink, to take showers in, to go swimming in, to uh, do fly fishing in. I mean, all the things that we use with water. Water is a huge issue, and river systems are a very important part of our life. Uh, street. The problem also with stream discharge is that they actually vary, meaning that you don't always have the same amount of water coming through a stream at a particular time. Sometimes you have more and sometimes less. And so this is a stream of the, the Little Patuatox River in Maryland. Whatever the heck, I don't know where that is, but that's where I got the graph. So, um, and you can see right here, this is the stream flow in feet per second. Feet per second, like we talked about. It's the stream flow, and it was most uh, prominent on the 3rd of November at a particular time of day, because this is one day, so I don't know if that's noon or it looks like it's probably at noon. And then you can kind of see how it varied over time, and all of a sudden you can see the graph dropping. And so by the, you got to the 10th, 9th or 10th, now you're only getting like 55 cubic feet per, um, per second. So you're, you, could, you see it changes over time, so that's intriguing. All right. Now, you can actually find stream discharge values on the internet. In fact, when you do the activity, you may do this ahead of time, I don't know. We um, will show you how to do that. In fact, I will do that right now. So I'm going to go to this website right here. So I'm going to click here and go to the website, take a second for my internet browser to launch. But here it comes. Here I am on the internet. And this is the uh, United States Geologic Survey, USGS website, and real time water data for Colorado. Okay, so I have uh, chosen Colorado. There's actually places that if you want to choose Minnesota or Wisconsin or whatever, you can. So look, there's the stream flow ta table. So I'm going to click right there. And there's all kinds of data coming up on the screen, as you can see. Notice there's just tons of different. Um, so let's just take, it'd um, uh, be nice to do Fountain Creek, but I wasn't able to find it. Let me see. Lone bitty dum bo bo. Some of these also they don't keep data on for the whole year, and so that creates some issue. Teller Reservoir Spillway near Stone County, Colorado. No, that's not what I want. Fountain Creek near Colorado Springs. Hey, there it is. Check it out. All right, here we go. That's what I was looking for. So there's a link right here. So I'm going to click right over here on this link and wait for it to launch. And now I have some data. Look at this. So here's the data. Um, I'm making this podcast here on uh, February the 12th, 2010. And the flow of water for the Fountain Creek um, Reservoir has been 10 cubic feet per second on February 5th, 6th. And you can kind of see, um, and actually, interestingly, if you look here, down here, well, that doesn't work. Right here, they've got the median statistic for 51 years. So that means the, basically roughly the average is there. And we've got a weird spike here today. All of a sudden, it started giving off a thousand cubic feet per second. My guess is, is that this data point is in error and they're going to correct it later. So we've got about a week or so worth of data for Fountain Creek. Um, this is actually, interestingly enough, this is where um, um, I went running So um, in the podcast. So this is cool. So it may be overflowing. We'll find out. Um, so here we have the data, and we've got some spikes. This, by the way, is a little different. This is a different graph. This is called gauge height, which is a little bit different. And um, you can see the feet, and we can see some spikes here on particular days. But I can do this for virtually any um, creek in Colorado, and actually any um, any river in um, America. They keep this data. They just got